Hi, everybody. This is Anna Hackman from Green Talk, and today we have a special guest on, on the show. We have Richard Campbell, and he's the president of Two Soilless, and this is going to be a fascinating presentation about how to grow cucumbers, tomatoes, lettuce, and gravel. I'm not kidding you. Richard, I am dumbfounded. When I watched your PowerPoint, I was like, oh, my God, no more weeds, no more fertilizer, no more ho hauling soil. Explain what Two Soilless is. Well, to Soilless is a family business that we started um, just this year so that we can share this gravel-growing gardening method um, with the world, essentially. Um, we've been doing it as a hobby, as a family, for some time now, and um, uh, kind of recognize, you know, what it can do for gardening. And so um, we decided to share it with people and it's the process of replacing your soil with gravel not all types of gravel but certain types of gravel um, as um, when that gravel is impacted with water or moisture uh, it leaches nutrients off of the gravel so that the seeds and root systems will have something to munch on I mean that just blows my mind because you would think that the, the gravel would make the plants too hot, and therefore they wouldn't want to grow. Well, the, the, the key is it, it, the key is the irrigation system that accompanies the gravel. See, just like in the ocean, um, in the ocean, on the ocean floor, you have rocks and gravel, and when the water of the ocean impacts it, um, life-sustaining environments are possible. That's why you see little fuzzy um, growth on rocks on the seafloor. Right. When you keep gravel moist for a long period of time, it allows for uh, seeds to germinate. So I guess because of, of the, the, not the chemicals, the uh, nutrients that are in the gravel, because that really is what Earth is, right? Yeah, yes. Soil in its, you know, you know, soil comes from gravel. Soil is crushed rock. If you look up the definition of soil and dirt, uh, you will see that it is crushed rock and um, other other you know natural materials, and so um, it is the nutrients within the gravel. So you have to kind of merge agriculture with geology uh, in order to really understand what's going on, um, and specifically more marine geology because it's gravel that comes from the rivers, oceans, or lakes that have that have been that have grown uh, in in water-based environments. Now, when I say grown with respect for gravel, you're looking at over thousands of years the creation of rocks you know, in, 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 impacting the earth. But in water, water, um, you know, whether lakes, rivers, or oceans, uh, they have all the plant, all the sea life and all the water life swimming around and living in the water. Well, when those, uh, you know, fish and other plankton, um, you know, die over time and they defecate and, you know, live in water, what happens is the gravel that's un in the water, the, the, you know, the materials, organic materials from the fish uh, settle onto the gravel over hundreds and thousands of years. So what ends up happening is that gravel becomes sedimentary, where nutrients from that live in the water, organic material, settle on this gravel and become part of the gravel. Uh, a lot of this gravel is limestone-based. Uh, if you look up what limestone is, it's sedimentary um, rocks in um, aquatic places where materials, organic materials, have settled on those rocks. And it's so it's 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 funny because you're taking me back to 101 ge geology in a in a college. Is there a special gravel, or is that proprietary? No, there's no real special gravel. Most all gravels, theoretically, let's just put it that way. Theoretically, theoretically, all river-based gravel should work. And it's no matter it's, where you buy it. And what about no, about is the, the rock enough? No fertilizers needed? Well, you know, if you think about what a rock, the, the composition of a rock uh, that comes from the ocean or from a river, 
when you break it and open it up, you see all the minerals. Well, those minerals, that quartz, it's quartz. It's always going to be quartz. And so what happens is, is that quartz, those minerals in the rock, provide the nutrients that fertilizers would normally provide. Now, how can you do this on a large scale? Have a lot of gravel. A lot, lot of gravel. Now, is there certain plants that aren't, you know what, you've actually shown me a slide, you have given me a slideshow that has like lettuce and marigolds and tomatoes on it. And I think the first part is cucumbers. I'm on your slide three, which um, shows like cucumbers and carrots and tomatoes like in May growing. Um, right. And yeah, that's... let's go through, let's look a little bit about your results and then I'll ask you some questions about that okay. as well. So uh, here you can see, um, the reason I'm describing is that we are also podcasting as well and the podcasters can't really see the video. So if I end up explaining things more visually, um, this is why Richard, so they can, they can kind of get an idea of what's going on without seeing the video. Perfect. So um, on page uh, number four, it's talked about week one of the cucumbers, and you have these little cucumbers coming out of the rocks. This is beyond cool. And um, and then um, I actually like your slide five. It shows week two, and they look beautiful. They're dark green, um, Richard. Uh, you know, usually cucumbers, if they're not getting enough fertilizer, they get that kind of um, lighter green. And these are dark green. These look really, really healthy. Now, mm -hmm. I see that there's water on the cucumbers. Yeah, that, that was from the rain from that earlier that morning when I went out to shoot. You know, every day I go out and take a couple pictures. So that's rainwater right there. Now, you know what? I should have asked you from the beginning, how the heck did you come up with this? I mean, where did this come from? It came up by accident. It came up by accident. I, I just graduated from college back in 93, and I went to live with my uncle in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And, um, you know, we had spit, we were eating watermelon on his patio, and we were, you know, the seeds had fell into some nat a, a gravel a gravel bed that we created just for regular decorations. And a few months later, we started to see growth. And we looked, and I was a rock uh, hunter, if you will. My brothers and I used to go rock hunting um, back when we were little. So I knew a little bit about geology and the anatomy of rocks, and that rocks of this nature have, you know, weird properties. And so, I mean, it was really, there's really only one solution. I mean, only one explanation. The gravel must be feeding these root systems. There's really no other explanation since as you see here in these pictures, it's just gravel. Wow. You know, when I first saw the, the video and I said, okay, gravel, because what would make gravel great is that it retains heat, and especially for heat-loving plants like cukes and tomatoes, um, eggplants, things like that. And then you also have on the slides lettuce, and lettuce hates heat. And I was like, no way. So I, I'm going to flip through. Um, let me go to week three um, is showing... See, cucumbers. You also have you also have carrot sprouts on your sixth slide, uh, coming up through um, the gravel, and your cukes look amazing. And again, carrots also don't like heat. So explain this to me. How does a, a plant like carrots, who is more of a cold weather plant, start growing out of this? Well, it stays moist under the surface of the gravel because of the special irrigation technique that we've engineered. We've been able to um, create a water storage reservoir under the gravel, which allows uh, the water to efficiently use through the gravel because the gravel doesn't absorb water. It holds water. Uh, and so that keeps it moist just under the top. And so the sunlight and the heat really focus on photosynthesis properties. Oh, okay. And it, it keeps cool underneath. Now, those carrots probably won't be ready for another couple months. Um, but you do see the sprouts there, um, you know, three weeks after planting. So is, why would those carrots not be ready for a couple months? Is it because it would take them longer? Or? Well, in this case, um, in this case, the, the, the cucumbers overshadowed them, and they're hiding them from the sunlight. 
They're still growing under there, but it's now crowded space, and they're not getting enough sunlight. Oh, I see. Okay, because I thought that that might be good if it's really hot. But I guess I guess you've kind of provided that that vehicle so that they're not too hot. That's that's very interesting. Do you think now this is this is a gardener asking you this question? Do you think that you can grow um, cool sensitive plants outside of the time period in this system? Okay, the gravel and the different varieties of plants and seeds. You know, not all gravel can grow all seeds. Uh, with the variety of gravel types out there, with the variety of seed types, you know, um, a, a lot of gravel will grow most things. So this method and approach will work for most plants, but not everything. So which ones have you found that it doesn't work for? I found that it, it hasn't yet worked for trees, just regular trees. And I, and I and I suspect uh, that's because if you know anything about growing trees from seed, a lot of trees need to be the seed needs to be prepped in a variety of different ways depending on what you grow. And so so far the seeds that I planted haven't seemed to catch, but I also didn't prepare those seeds well either. Um, have you tried growing Have you tried growing beans or peas? Yes, we, peas and beans do well. Wow. Peas, a whole list of things that have done well uh, is on our website, um, www.2soilless.com. You must have been reading my mind because I was just going to say, can you give me the URL? The um, I actually have on your slide five, uh, no, your slide eight, which says cucumbers after five weeks are, um, are overshadowing the other crops. They look really good. Now, you, you didn't fertilize these. They're just, you know, your proprietary irrigation um, system and that's and the gravel, and you're good to go? Yep. The, the, the irrigation system, which is regular uh, materials you can get at Home Depot, nothing fancy, and the gravel, which you can get at any nursery um, near you. Make sure it's river gravel. A river, river gravel. gravel. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's, that, that's, that's important. I was going to ask you, does it matter what kind of gravel? Yes. Yes, it does matter the type of gravel, and you will you will find in your local stores multiple types of gravel, and we recommend that you get a bag of each. So this gravel bag of gravel, you know, um, forty pound bag is you know three four dollars, so it's very inexpensive to get one one bag, a couple bags of gravel to test out which gravel works best for what you're trying to grow. Now, does I know you're you're selling on your website um, the instructions on how to create these types of uh, gravel beds that are you know are productive. Do you have to? Um, and I don't. And stop me, Richard, if I ask a question that's part of your instructions and you don't want to um, you know say this on the video. But do you have to prep the soil underneath at all? Like you know, dig it down so that like like for instance, like carrots are able to go through it, or is that on your instructions, or is that you know? Yes, for, okay, this particular gravel bed that you're looking at is, um, is about three inches of gravel, and under the, under, and under it is um, a, a protective um, base. And so for deep-rooted plants like tomatoes and carrots, you do have to cut through the base. But the gravel um, nutrients are enough that even if, the roots are going down deeper than the gravel bed into the soil uh, where you cut. Uh, the nutrients provide enough, um, the gravel provides enough nutrients so that the root systems can still flourish. You know what I'm curious about this? I'm wondering if you can you can extend the, um, the life of your gardening because, like for instance, um, in the, you know, I'm zone five, which means in October I get a frost. Because of the gravel being warmer, retaining the heat, I wonder if I could garden a little bit longer. Have you tried that to see if you can extend your um, gardening past, you know, that cutoff date? Yeah, usually in the winter, you know, everything dies up in our gravel gardens too. Okay, so it's uh, not it's not going to give me any more extra life? It, it could give you uh, a few extra weeks in the fall past, but, um, you know, gravel, you know, it's a little loose. So the cold will get down into the rocks, uh, and you know, in, in general, if it's outside, it you know what we you know in our gravel beds, um, 
in the in the winter in the winter they they're barren. So, so do you have you know, to do you have that's it, you know, it's it's not going to if it freezes uh, that ground there will also freeze. So there's no more. There's water oh. because there's water because there's moisture there. So the cold eventually freezes the moisture. Well, so that there's no need for cover cover crops with uh with your system. Like you know how people mm-hmm. like do cover crops or they do oh, a yeah. lot of straw because no. you know they're protecting from erosion and you won't have erosion. You have no. rock. Yeah, and it's all drains. The rocks just drain out. Wow. So there's no, there's no erosion. There's no need for cover crops. There's no need for amendments at the end of the season or fertilizers to prepare the soil for next year. Actually, what ends up happening is that the, the dead roots, the roots from these cucumbers that will die over the, the, the winter will decompose, making the gravel bed more uh, nutrient rich over time. Now here's here, you know you just made um just made a point. So I don't have to pull the plant. I just let it kind of die on its own. You let it die on its own, and that way it'll it'll feed the bed. And what about uh, crop rotation? Because you know how like for instance, not cucumbers, but um, um, not potatoes. What's what I'm uh, yeah? Well, cucumbers too. Cucumber squash. They have the, that beetle. That's ugh, I hate that beetle. That beetle that you know. That's why you crop rotate because then he can't find a home. You know, um, because you keep moving his home every year. How does that work with gravel? Am I getting too technical? No, I mean we we just haven't seen that. Because I guess we they... haven't seen bugs. You know. Really? Find. I mean, we see bugs crawling on the gravel. We see spiders spinning webs, but we haven't seen bugs um, and other, you know, small, tiny critter vegetation make homes in the gravel. It's not like in dirt where you where you where they can bore, and you know, we have we we just haven't seen it. Uh, that's that's your your <laughs> that's your weight in gold. <laughs> Because you know how much stuff people buy to get rid of those bugs or, or plant later or, you know, crop rotate constantly because they're so, you know, um, they want to disrupt that insect cycle. I mean, <laughs> wow. I, I just yeah. have to say, wow. Yeah, no, we haven't, uh, we haven't come across uh, too much of, too much, too much related to insect. Um, so what about the anything. Japanese beetle? Nothing? Nah, not that we've seen. Now that we've seen, I'll check. I'll check the bigger site that we have no, in a- Nashville. But I, I don't know. We haven't. No a- aphids. No. You know those little white bugs that go underneath, like the, your tomato plants. None of that. Not that we've seen. You know, it might be also because of the light color of the of the uh, the gravel reflecting. Aphids don't like light. And like a lot of times they say if you put tinfoil underneath the tomatoes, it reflects back up and they hate it. They think they're out, out in the light. <laughs> so I'm wondering, uh, if, I'm wondering if that's helping you because your gravel's light colored. I don't know. Just just talk it out loud here. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, the, the science behind this is new. And so this technology requires long-term technical study because you know, we're not – geologists. We're not horticulturists. We're not agri-scientists. And the field of geological agriculture doesn't exist for the most part. I mean, I I can't find it anywhere. Have you you talked to any of the universities about, like like University of Texas or or Texas Ag or any of those? I've, I've talked to universities and they don't think it's possible. But it is. You're showing, I mean, you have proof. I mean, you could right. take a video camera out and, sh- you know, it's not like you plant it in your garden. I, I noticed, um, can you, let's say, um, um, like let's say you were talking about your carrots or you plant something and you're a novice garden, which you're, gardener, which you're not, and you want to move it. Let's say you want to move it. I tend to never disturb my plants once I plant them because they go into shock and they hate it. Can you move plants out of your gravel into another gravel garden? Yes. You can, and it's easier you as you would as you would think because you can just pull up the roots and they come out bare root, and you have to just quickly put it to where you want to be and 
then you have to, you know, pray and hope that it, 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 it takes. Right. But we don't we don't do much, just as you know, as most people don't. Um, but there, you know, for a minute with this cucumbers, uh, you know, when, you know when it got to you know week seven, uh, if it if if it started to grow too wild, I was preparing to move this entire garden to a different part of my yard and, where and, there was more space. And have you done that? Well, I didn't need to. It kind of. You know, at this, if you look at slide uh, eleven, that that's where it maxed out before um, producing cucumbers. So it didn't uh, over overtake the complete sidewalk. Uh, so I didn't have to move it, but I, but you can. I'd be curious. Um, are these? Just add a question. Are your seeds that you're using? Are they just regular garden variety seeds, or are they high, uh, heirlooms? Nope, there's regular garden variety seeds. Because I'm, I'm curious to watch, you know, because heirlooms, tend, like your cucumber plant, is is one-tenth of what mine looks like right now because mine are heirloom seeds. So I, I, I guess people also have to know what they're planting, um, how big it's going to get so to, okay. to, to plant properly. That's just a side note. That's a gardening note. Um I'm sure it's going to grow as big or bigger in the gravel because, you know, you're giving it that shade and nutrients that it needs. But um, here's my other question for you. Um, I actually went to your slide 12, and I show people what your cucumbers look like. I notice, and is this garden, by the way, in Nashville that you're showing me? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. So you guys have major humidity. And one thing I wanted to point out, and I don't know why this is, and I'm just going to point it out to you, you have such humidity that those, I'm surprised that your leaves don't have powdery mildew all over them. And you don't. That's, 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 that's the beauty of the gravel. I mean, when I saw that, I said, you know, I go out and you're going to laugh. I spray a milk concoction on all my squash and cucumber um, plants because um, I hate powdery mildew. Hate it, hate it, hate it. And I'm not half as humid as Washington, D.C. is. And you don't have powdery mildew. Why is that? You know... The gravel, you know, again, we're not horticulture scientists, but, I you know, the theory is, you know, with the powdery mildew, you know, between the dirt and the grass and other vegetation, and when the dew sets on the, you know, the, the dew, the, the um, pollen, uh, it all, you know, normally builds up. But here, I can only assume that because we're keeping the root systems moist constantly, Constant moisture in the root system and great drainage. You have and, and great drainage, natural good drainage. That it's it's just keep it's just as you see those leaves. Those leaves, like you see on slide um, eleven, they just are nice and green and lush. Even though it's been ninety, a hundred degrees. I can't. I can't get over it. I'm look. I am looking at. I'm actually under slide fourteen. You're blowing my mind right now. I'm I'm taking my dirt out. I'm going to go get gravel. And this is this one right here is where um, I had to lift the vine up to take a picture of the uh, cucumbers underneath. So that that slide 14 is where I I pulled the pulled up the vine so I could show these cucumbers growing. Unbelievable! And they look beautiful. They really 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 look beautiful. I'm on your slide 14. Um, I'm going to go over to. There's slide 16, so people can see the cucumbers. They look beautiful. And how, did you find that was a difference in taste? Uh, everybody likes it. Son, neighbors, they say it's sweeter. Really? Store bought. And so now we're we're we've embarked upon the process of getting this tested. Um, it's expensive, but we we have to do it. Um, so we're sending um, sending some samples to a test laboratory so we can get the nutrient value and content so we can compare it to regular so we can just see just how well but you know as you see in the in the next slides um, especially uh, slides 22 23 24 every every couple of days we get a little crop look at this and, look, at your, look at your tomatoes I'm on your slide 23 here's we're looking at tomatoes yeah, we see we see the tomato. Tomato is shining through amid the cucumbers. And uh, the only challenge that I did here is that I didn't expect these cucumbers to take over. 
Uh, otherwise, I, I would have just planted it by themselves. So I think I crowded the field a little bit. But, you know, sometimes they don't mind, like in a raised garden, they don't mind being a little close. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they help each other. Like if you had planted carrots and tomatoes together, they like each other. But it sounds like you don't need to do that because you, you're, you're giving them what they need. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Richard, what what is the plans for to soil us? What what I know you have on your website, you have instructions on how to create your gravel bed, and it's not as easy as putting down gravel, which I'm understanding from you, because it seems like the irrigation part is really really crucial. Yeah, the irrigation part is everything. So it, you have on the website, you have um, um, for residential, um, you have it's it's very inexpensive um, the price for someone to get instructions on how to make their own gravelous bed, and you also have it for commercial. Am I right? Well, the commercial one, we're not. I need to update that. We're not going to bring that out until um, a few months uh, uh, from now. But yes, we will have a commercial manual for for industry, for big industry that wants to adopt this uh, uh, process. Now, do I? Let's say. Let's say I, you know, get my riverbed gravel, and I do what your instructions say. Do every year? Do I need to put a little bit more gravel in? Or does your instructions say, you know, make sure it's X amount of height and stuff like that and what to do the next season? Um, you only time you need to put more gravel in is if you think you're going to grow something that needs a little more depth. Okay. And that is explained yeah. in your manual. Right, right, right. If, if, if you're going to, like potatoes, potatoes, you know, this is a three-inch deep gravel. Um, so if I were doing potatoes, like next season, I might add another two inches to make it five so that the potatoes um, can, you know, grow because, you know, the underground growth thing. Right. Uh, and so, but other than that, no, you, you should be, because this is rock, rock is not breaking down in your lifetime. Once you plant, once you set up one of these gravel gardens, you should be, you should be okay for, for years. Now, do you think that you can grow herbs, and uh, perennial herbs in, in a garden in, in like, gravel like this because i'll tell you what will love it is sage yeah things most of the things most of the seeds you get at home depot herbs included you can just drop them in i'm i'm making a gravel bed I, this is so cool because um now here's my question i'm sure you're thinking long term on this because what this could mean to the world yeah plus i was a peace corps volunteer because so i've seen i've seen countries that don't have soil anymore right they don't and so they're you know they're trying their best for few food security purposes to uh to fix that problem but it's very difficult if your country doesn't is not is not zoned for good soil so i, I do see world application of this um are you in talks with anybody about this uh little by little right now it people can't believe it and they can't get their head around it. I mean, we are, we're talking, you know, for, for thousands of years, humans have been growing in dirt and soil. So now, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, non-agriculture people are saying something different. Well, that's hard for the industry to accept. I've talked to agri-scientists, agri universities, and, you know, it, it's, it's difficult for them to believe. Have you talked to Cornell? Cornell, uh, the university. Yeah, they might be. No. They might be really interested in what you're doing because they're pretty, you know, big in the ag department, and they they tend to um, them Ohio State, uh, Texas, uh, a is it Texas Ag, Texas A and M. Those three, I you know, I know from from Green Talk because I cite them and stuff like that. They might be really interested in in your technology because it could mean a tremendous change in the world. Now, here's well, if, here's my. If I could get to a person. Uh, who, who has a who has a an open ear for innovation? Uh, then I would love it. But so far, I haven't. I, I have begun to speak to speak to some people at the University of Missouri, who who are looking or who are batting this around to consider whether or not they want to try it. Wow. Now here's here's another question for you. When we go, when we're talking about the world. You know, like for instance, um, areas that there's no longer good topsoil there's no longer you can't really bring in compost i mean it's just not available if they don't have a riverbed gravel they have their own rock do you think there's a way that you could somehow create a system with their own rock uh 
that's where the science of that's where the young science of this field um plays and i would just have to say i don't think so if it's not river based uh it's you know if you're if you're a country that's coastal then you're 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 okay you can just go to the ocean right and pick up scoop up some of the rocks and you know get some you know the other basic materials that's also available everywhere uh and then follow the instructions so you know if you're a country with an ocean um you're okay uh or if you're a country that has a river you just have to you know get the rocks at the height of the, the rainy season because the the problem is is that if you start trucking over gravel let's say to areas that are pretty far away um so that they could have gravel beds. I'm not sure about the carbon footprint of that part. You know, or, you know, that's the only problem that that I'm I'm wrestling with. I I understand, you know, no more pesticides, no more herbicides, no, you know, um, no more fertilizers because you have the whole system. But what do you think about that? Well, the thing is, uh, you know, looking at uh, from an international development perspective, uh, in these countries that are really far away, how do you help them? Right. Well, that's where the donors, the donor, um, ag, all the ag donors, you know, they're, you know, they have the big money. And they're like, how can we help these places? Well, for this, we say, use your money for the gravel and the transport of the gravel. Right. So, because they're no longer doing the fertilizers in the round up, right. and the roundup yeah. and the exactly Monsanto. And once you know, you start growing. Yeah. And once you start growing in this stuff. Just like you see with those marigolds, well, you know, with marigolds, those blooms, when they die, we'll have the new seeds. Yes. So we'll be able to harvest seeds from that and not buy marigold seeds next year. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to see if some of your stuff is going to reseed and actually you will have marigolds the following year without even replanting. Uh, that's um, something, you know, we, we, we do see that at some of our... Um, some of our various beds in, in Tennessee. How how long have you been doing this? I mean, you, you said you started this in 1993 when you your first watermelon plant grew. How long have you been in in studying this and and you know perfecting it? And well, since you know, basically in '93 when we looked at the watermelon, we said, okay, this will be fun to play with more and see how see what we can do and improve it. And so '94 '95, we really started to put up the first bed. Um, as you see on the website, some photos there, and then with the with the cinder blocks around it, and they're they're, they're more raised, and we've been growing stuff ever since. So it's been almost it's been ten it's been over ten years. It's been over it's definitely yeah it's been over ten years over fifteen. Years. So why is it and taken so, fifteen years for you to put it on the market? What what prompted you to put the instructions on the market? Well, you know the market, you know, a couple things. Now, after 15 years, we see that this works for the long term. Uh, and we, we, we didn't want to, um, you know, share it unless we knew it really works well. And with 15 years of not changing any of our beds or rotating any of the gravel or doing anything, we're like, okay, we feel comfortable that it works well. We, we're going to actually wait a few more years. Uh, so that we could undergo the process of testing in terms of the nutrient values and all that. But with the world, the news, the media, the green, the organic ways that society's on, it just felt like a good time to go ahead and test the waters. Let's get it on out there. And so we, you know, just last, last fall we thought about how we might do that. Uh, and didn't come up with the manual idea until late um, because we thought at first we were going to go and install these in people's backyards. But uh, that, you know, quickly just couldn't, it was not logistically feasible. And so, we, you know, we thought about how, you know, how to take this to market. How would, you know, how would it work? What would we need to do? And so we just began looking at it closer. Uh, versus enjoying it for home use. Yeah, I'm actually on your slide 36, um, and we're going to wrap it up pretty soon, of your lettuce. And I wanted people to see 
your lettuce looks gorgeous. You're making me sick. My lettuce doesn't look like this. You know, uh, <laughs> I mean, if anybody could see it, this is lush and it's beautiful and I want to pick it. And I, I, I hate you, Richard, because my lettuce right now looks like, like pathetic because it's so hot. Wilted. Wilted and gross and it went Wilted. to seed. Went to seed and, you know, sometimes I find my, my plant, I, I'm looking at this going like, some of my plants would go, oh my God, they would love this because um, I think a lot of it is nutrient rich, it's like you said, the the, the stone. Um, now, let me just ask one last question, and I wanted to wrap it up. With any, like for instance, lettuce, you have the same issue that I do. You have to stop at a certain time because it gets too hot. No heat. Um, no, we just you know you just keep the thing about here. You just keep picking. I mean, see there, lettuce week eight. Uh, we started. We started. But can you grow? That. Can you grow this lettuce? Is this lettuce variety that you're growing heat tolerant, or it's just basic old lettuce? I mean, basic old lettuce seeds from Home Depot. So I so I can I can grow lettuce in like July. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I um the the super heat. If you look on the back of the slide thirty. Okay, let me go back. Go back to slide thirty. And you see now, the thing about the lettuce is I kind of let the lettuce go. Well, your slide 30 is your marigolds. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. But if you look behind the marigolds. Kind of hard to see. Okay, I see them a little bit. You see that little bit, a little lighter? See, that's lettuce. That's the same lettuce, but I just let it go. After two or three picks and um, two or three meals, you know, everything I needed for the photos I got, and then I started focusing on the cucumbers. <laughs> And so after a month of focusing on the cucumbers, I forgot about the lettuce. And, okay, then I go back to the other part of the yard because I've just been so much focusing on the cucumbers. Forgot about the lettuce. I come back a month later, and you see how tall the lettuce has grown. And since, you know, if you don't pick it, it doesn't, you know, it's like roses. If you don't prune it, it doesn't grow right. So these lettuce have just grown kind of wild. And really tall. I mean, I could go pick it, but you know, I'm you know, I'm so focused on the the uh, the, the the cucumbers. And did, so did, the heat, yeah, it's growing. It's growing, and that gravel bed you see there on slide thirty is only one inch deep. And is is are are they? Um, did they go to seed at all? Did the lettuce go to seed? Yeah. Oh, it eventually goes to seed. Okay, I didn't know that. I, I'm not. Again, we're not um, professional gardeners, so. When do they see? Do they see from the top? Yeah, later? yeah. They see from the top. Usually, what they they call it bolting. That's what it's called. The term is bolting when they go to seed. Like spinach will go to seed, and lettuce will go to seed when it's too hot. But usually, that happens. Oh, you know, that actually happens in because I'm zone five. That usually happens by June, end of June. You know what? That happened. That happened here. But I saw. I I I wasn't. You know, again, I'm a novice that actually. Uh, you know, letting, you know, the, the, this bolting thing you're talking about. And so I actually cut those off. Was your lettuce bitter, though? Um, I mean, when I ate, when I ate it at, at the 10-week mark, it was great. But, but um, well, I'm just saying that usually when it bolts, it makes the plant bitter. Some people let them bolt because then they provide you with nice little seedlings in the fall. And I'm trying that. Uh, I am trying that for the first time. I've never done that. I just I usually just pull oh, it out. I've never I've never done that with lettuce. I I'm I'm actually going to see if it works because um, I just pull it out because it looks disgusting. So um, <laughs> if, if, see, that's what I I saw. It looked disgusting, so I just pulled it out. But I guess that was what I'm supposed to say. Right, but you could also harvest the, harvest the seeds, like you said. Is I, I didn't know that. I didn't it. know that though that that what I was. Killing, I needed for seeds. I wish I, I'm so mad at myself now that I did well, that. Well, actually, you know, with the lettuce, um, would be curious if you had paid attention to it and kept picking it and picking it, picking it. I wonder if it would have bolted. It may not have bolted. You should try that and see next next uh, next year. Is to keep picking it and picking it and see if the gravel keeps it um, cool enough that you can maintain it. Because usually, like, I, it just all of a sudden overnight will bolt, like in my garden. Like, and the bolting is when at the top of it it starts to grow little yellow flowers and yep. little pods. Yep. Yep. It, it did that already. And, but I, I cut off the bolts, not knowing what it was. And it's still growing? And it's still growing, yes. Yeah, because yeah, mine just starts to... It, I, they say when it bolts that the lettuce gets bitter, and you didn't find that. Well, I haven't... Again, I, had, I, 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 let it, I left it alone. 
So I didn't keep harvesting it like I should have. You know what I'd like and to it, s- I'd like to see you grow and see how that happens is see if peas can survive um, in the gravel in the heat. Yeah, I mean because we, peas you know, peas usually die; they start to shrivel. We uh, uh, the heat. This is generally, generally speaking, a little heat resistant because. Even last year, I think, in our, at our Nashville location where we had a, they had a, we had a drought for like fifty days. Well, all the pictures on the website was taken during the drought. Really? Well, the pictures, uh, the pictures of where you see cinder blocks, all those cinder blocks and trash can photo gravel gardens you see, not what you see here. If you you know here is one set of photos taken in D.C. that you see in the PowerPoint. On the website, it's a combination of these photos as well as other photos. All of the other photos were taken in Nashville at the 50th day on a 50-day drought. So there was no rain for 50 days. So the, the, um, in your manual, you explain the amount of irrigation and how, how to irrigate, right? So it's just also right. the amount of... So would you say that you're irrigating less than I would be irrigating with my dirt? Oh, yeah. See, with this, remember, we have an underground water storage reservoir. Oh, I see. So, so would you say... So once you water it, once you fill up the reservoir once, it will keep the gravel bed moist for, you know, the better part of a week or two. I only, I only watered, um, in terms of full watering with the hose, Four, five times this summer. Are you serious? Where where the cucumbers are? I mean, I you know with and then the and then the marigolds and the, the lettuce. I haven't watered there since May. Are you since, serious? Really, since June? No, no, since April, since since early May is the last time I actually watered myself. So, uh, would so I don't. Yeah, I, and that's another thing I forgot about. The, you know, I just went back there and I was like, wow, these marigolds are big. Let me take a picture. Uh, but I forgot because I was focused so much on those cucumbers. But, you know, what you might want to do in the future is start documenting which ones, like, who needs what for what. Well, in general, from watering perspective, you really only need to water once or twice, once every week or two in general. For all of our plants that we've seen and, and dealt with, you water good once once every once a week, once every two. So, weeks. You, so would would I would it be too generous to say that I'm probably using you're probably using half the water that I do. You water every day. Yeah. Well, every yeah, I water. No, I actually well, I actually water every other day because I have a, so a huge straw mulch. You so you're watering three times a week. Yes. I'm saying water water once every other week. And, so. and I just wanted to point out something. You have no weeds. How come you don't have weeds? Well. Because underneath we have a barrier. Oh, I see. Between the gravel and the ground below, and so that barrier means no weeds. Yeah, but but when you put your little seedling in, you're now creating an opening in that barrier, right? Well, um, see, I don't see. You mean for no, well, not for these, for the deep-rooted stuff. Yes, you do create an opening. You know that's six inches down, five inches down. Right. But that, but that, but those weeds don't. They may get a little water, but they're definitely not getting any sunlight. Ah. So it's no way for them to no way for them to be supported. Wow. Because they, yeah, they, yeah, they're not they're not getting much. Okay, so let me go really quick flip to your website because I actually have it off so people can see it. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Let me make sure because. With an on-screen thing, it's a little different than I have to move it up. Um, everybody, I'm on right now to Soil List, the website, and I'm going to click. What? Where is it where people can buy your instructions? Because I'm having trouble seeing it. Is it on, on every page? You should see a little download button. Okay, I'm, I'm, I have my clicker on it so people can see where it is, and um, you can download. What is it? Is twenty dollars? Is that right for residential? Yep. yep. And that twenty dollars will save you hundreds in, in this and future years because once you lay this down one time, that's it. Wow, Richard, this has been uh, phenomenal. I mean, uh, phenomenal. Um, I mean, like you said, we're talking no fertilizers, no straw mulch anymore. 
no lot not as much water no pesticides wow you got me breathless heat, heat resistant heat resistant i mean you got me you got me i'm looking at my garden right now going like crap let's dig it all up see, see if you look on the website on the overview that jalapeno pepper wait a second was, let me just see, was, let me go where where's overview overview the first uh Okay, there's a... You know, there's overview, then there's company science. Okay. So... Oh, the jalapeno. Um, okay, I got it. That jalapeno, if you go to the next slide, I mean, next area, company science, that Xenia, um, that was all done, um, uh, those two, those two, that flower and that jalapeno, that was during the drought. That was after 50 days of unbearable heat and no rain. If you look on success crops, you see the jalapenos there. You see where 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 that was. Um, uh, also, wow. Any, any other? Wow. I'm trying to show you anything else in terms of? Wow. Wow. This is something. this is really 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 cool, Richard. Thank you. I mean, this has been such eye opening. You know, me who you know has to pay for fertilizer and pays for compost every year and and uh you know turning over my own compost not that that's not good but you know um it's a lot of work and it's been a, my garden's been a lot of money and this could save me a lot of money and actually give it give a really good productive um i mean i you know i'm thinking of doing your your um your system for my eggplants next year because eggplants are so finicky and they mm-hmm. they love heat, and I think that the I think the gravel and the drainage they love good drainage. So I think this would be like a win win combination for plants that you really have trouble with. Now, if I were you, I would test different gravel types this season. Okay. So I would go to your local Home Depot, Lowe's, nursery, pick up a bag, one from each place. Uh, you know, they're all going to be different gravels from different beds of water all over America. And you know, follow the instructions. Set up, set up a bunch of mini ones, and um, you know they're easy to set up once you once you know how to do the irrigation. It's really easy. Um, and then drop some seeds in and, and test it and see see what does best. As you can see here in Washington, with that specific gravel type, those cucumbers love it. As you so, can how see. do you figure out? I mean, how do you? That would be something for you to also have as part of your instructions or maybe even as a side note or a course or whatever as how to pick the right gravel. Well, because the science of this technology is new, no one's ever done it. Again, the universities can't believe it. So that means nothing's really fully tested. You have to think, there are hundreds of types of gravel out there. And so so what we recommend in our instructions is to go get two or three kind of your available gravel and, you know, the $3 a bag. Right. And then see which one works best for what you're trying to grow. And that's it. So, so do, you think, each, do you think it's different for each type of plant or do you think that what you, I, Yes. Oh, really? I do. I do. I do. Because, like, like look, at, look at what, I mean, it was uh, with certain things because even with what you see in the PowerPoint, you see that those cucumbers took off like nobody's business. Right. But the rest of the stuff, uh, not as much. And so other types of gravel will, will be better probably for my carrots or if I didn't do my carrots, then these. But for cucumbers, this gravel obviously works extremely well. But I'm also wondering if your cucumbers would have done well in anything because they're heat-loving plants. Uh, maybe. I mean, I know that when I grew cucumbers in dirt uh, a year back, they didn't do this. No, no, they like the heat, and they like good drainage. No. So I'm, yeah, yeah, and so the heat that maybe, the stone gives maybe, them, yeah. maybe so. It's possible. It's possible. It's, it's hard to say because of the, the the because of the newness of the field. Right. And see, we're not scientists. And to, to test everything, you have to go through, it's a lot of testing required, and it's very expensive to test the nutrient counts of, of rock. And, and, the, and the testing people don't even test for that because it hasn't been asked of industry yet. So this is the beginning of a new science in agriculture. So in this early 
stages uh, as home gardeners because of all that newness and lack of information by the industry. Um, we recommend just get a couple types, do a couple seeds, and see which one uh, takes off uh, but will the you, best. Will you, and that's what you should focus on next year. And will you also have on your manual uh, or, or supplemental course or something what you found of certain rocks to do well with certain vegetables? Yes, we, we, we put in there um, the type of gravel that should do best. And it's basically river bottom pea gravel. And, and also limestone based, which is also part of the instructions. The limestone is key. Limestone based river gravel. But most of your sellers won't know whether it's limestone right. based or not. Right. Because they don't, they just buy gravel in different colors. See, gravel normally maybe is you should Maybe thing. you should sell the gravel too. Well, we're looking into that. Yeah, because we then, are looking, there, there is one type of gravel that we know works amazingly out of um, Tennessee. And that's because uh, Tennessee River gravel is highly enriched with, you know, it's a, it's a limestone shelf uh, in that part of the country. So, you know, we are, we're looking at that. We're looking at um, doing some things with Home Depot and some of their gravel types. Um, this gravel uh, here, um, you know, we got it at a nursery. Uh, but the one, you know, the lettuce gravel came from Home Depot, what you see growing in that lettuce. Yeah, because if, if, you could, if you could make it easier for people, like, to be able to buy the gravel from you or source the gravel from you, then there's no guesswork. Because that's where there's no, like, I don't have to go to Home Depot and say, gosh, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? I'd rather know I'm going to buy his system and buy his gravel, and I know it's going to yeah, work. But the thing about buying gravel for me or for a specific place, the shipping is enormous. Or, or like you said, so, being at Home Depot. Like, like this is your yeah, to soil then, system. Yeah, but then we, but, but you know, to get the, the gravel, a certain type of gravel from, Tennessee to LA or West Coast. Right. When really, really, most all gra- most all river bottom gravel works. So I would, you know, I've tested uh, here in Washington. Uh, I've tested six types of river bottom gravel. They've all they've all produced. Okay. Yeah. So I wouldn't. The science the science is still the same. Right. The development of rock and water, uh, the, the physics behind it doesn't change. Okay. I see. I got gotcha. you. Uh, the, the nutrients in each water may give that gravel a little more oomph or a little less oomph. Uh, but, you know, go on and get your regular, you know, get the manual so you can see it. Uh-huh. But go get your regular, uh, your regular river bottom pea gravel that's a little bit dirty. It's a little, it has sand on it, you know, a little, you know, a little bit dirty. Um, and, you know, so meaning that it, 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 you see that it's come from a sandy area. And, and a lot of your store-bought gravel is a little dirty. Last, so that's what you want. last question. Okay. How's this gravel? Have you done it with clay yet? You know, clay beds? No. Because clay's really tough. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't imagine you can do much with clay. Because that's what the South has a lot of clay, like Georgia. Yeah, so, but you know, yeah, no, no. The clay is clay is bad. I think. Well, you should try because you might be surprised. Like you're you mean, s- using your system with clay. Using this with without gravel? No, 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 no. Using your system in the South with their soil. And like in South Carolina? Yeah. Well, we, we do. We have people with gravel, active gravel beds in South Carolina. With locally bought gravel um, as the you know, growing environment. And it worked? It's working, yeah, it's working. Wow, that's so cool. That is so great. So this has been a phenomenal interview. I mean, I tried to keep it to 30 minutes, but there was just so much information, and Richard, you were so interesting. Um, Everybody, go on the site. Go ahead, Richard, tell us the site again. Uh, www.2, that's T-O, soil, S-O-I-L, less, L-E-S-S, toesoilless.com. Or you can follow on Twitter, at, uh, you know, slash to soil less, you know, twitter.com slash to soil less. Every few days I post a new photo on how these cucumbers are growing. 
Richard, it was a pleasure, and I'm sure you and I will be talking uh, more about your science and, and everything on there. Um, readers and listeners, I will have a short article, and um, Richard's going to supply me some pictures of some of his cukes and his um, you know, uh, his lettuce for the site, so you can also read a write-up on the website. And um, this is phenomenal. And Richard, you and I will probably be talking off uh, offline about your product as well. Thank you, Richard, so much for coming on Green Talk. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it, and I appreciate the time. Thank you very much.